guys. Okay, first things first. All right, um, been a little bit absent from uh, YouTube uh, due to one or two personal circumstances like landlord changing over and not even knowing if I'm going to be able to continue living in the house we're living in. Um, so that's sort of 50% hmm, sorted now, but I've got to vacate the house next door and blah, blah, blah. And uh, I've also been trying to learn dark table. Yes, I have. <laughs> so leave a comment in the comment section below if you want me to do videos on dark table um, because it is a blooming learning experience. God, I thought raw therapy was bad, but well, there you go. Right, so to get on with this video, which is just sort of a, a, a bit of a quickie on um, problems in Lightroom that I've mentioned in videos before and I've done videos on before, but a lot of people sort of don't bother looking through my back catalogue. And so it, it's a Lightroom versus raw therapy uh, type of thing. And I'm going to be showing you the one thing I loathe and detest about Lightroom. Uh, but in the description panel below, uh, you'll see two links. One to this camera profile's quickie over on my Dropbox, which is the raw file um, that we're going to be using in this um, uh, particular video, uh, which everybody can go and download. And the second one is this camera profiles. Yes. And this is taking about two hours to upload. Now, this is the folder which contains all my camera profiles that I have on my system. And um, they're basically uh, camera raw profiles. And if you click the link, um, you'll go come to this camera profiles folder and in there you'll see two folders, Adobe Standard and Camera. Um, don't bother with the Adobe Standard ones. Okay, um, because these are the automated profiles that Lightroom adds uh, to your pictures when you bring them in. Um, these, however, camera, um, what you can do is go into here and you can select your camera. Um, the raw file we're working on today uh, comes off a Nikon D500 and so if we scroll down to Nikon D500 um, and we click on there and open that folder, um, you could, if you got a D500 and that was the only camera you got, you could go and download all these DCP profiles um, for the uh, Nikon D500, which you can use inside a raw therapy. Okay, and you've seen me do this before, but this is just me actually putting the um, profiles up there and um, people who've got windows or um, mac machines and have got lightroom on there have already got these folders and these dcp profiles within uh, the um, camera raw application data but for those of you on linux um, then you are screwed basically so I'm doing a favour here for all the Linux users, yes I am, and for all the PC users and Mac users that, for whatever reason, don't use Lightroom and Photoshop. So uh, there you go. Right, so you can either pick your camera and go and, go and download the um, uh, DCP profiles for it, or you can just go and download the entire folder so you've got... Um, uh, DCP profiles for every camera currently in manufacture or just about anyway so there we go the raw file if you go and download it is this one okay right so the first thing I'm going to do is to put it back to how it will look when you bring it into Lightroom if that's what you so desire and um, I'm just going to go to develop settings and I'm just going to go reset so here it is with all of Lightroom's rubbish on it now the reason I'm showing you Lightroom even though I'm going to be talking about raw therapy is the fact that I want to show you the big fault 
in Lightroom, which made me start using raw therapy in the very, very first instance. And uh, what I want to do is I just sort of want to brighten this image up a little bit. So um, I'm just going to take it over to the develop module and um, you can see it's in Adobe Color, blah, 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 blah. Quite often you'll see me apply this process version swap preset, um, which sort of gets, shows you more a more accurate version of what your raw file looks like. Um, so there you go. But what we can do is very easily just go into the um, masking panel and we can say select sky and um, what we can do is we can turn up the exposure in the sky a little bit all right and then we could turn up the saturation in the sky a little bit and make it go like that now what we want to do is also um, improve the chimney uh, etc that we can see here now a lot of people would go um, create new mask and they go select subject I don't do that because I want everything selected that wasn't in the sky selection and you can't always guarantee that select sky is the opposite of select subject and you can't so what I'm going to do is go select sky again and then I'm going to click invert okay so now I've inverted the sky selection and what we're going to do is lift up the exposure a little bit and uh, lift up the saturation a little bit and there we go that's sort of pretty much what i wanted to do and i might just warm the colors up just a smidge and give it a little bit more exposure and a little bit of shadow lift okay right so there we go so that's the image processed in Lightroom. Now, yes, we want to close the masking panel, so we can either click close over here or, or use the shortcut, which is Shift W. And uh, there we go. Now then, yes, Andy, that looks great. What's the problem with Lightroom? Right, I'm going to show you the problem with Lightroom now. And we go into it at 400%, and you can see we've got this massive, massive, sharpening halo all around it and if we come down to the um, sharpening panel and we take all the sharpening off you can still see that halo is in there all right now if i just um, come back to uh, the basics panel again uh, what we could do you can see it's switched out to adobe standard um, which is part of the function of my process version swap preset. Um, but we could, in actual fact, go and load these camera matching profiles. And we could try it with the neutral profile. Um, and uh, there we go. So we're on camera neutral, right? Which made a little bit of a difference, I suppose, if we go back to the sharpening. You can see it made something of a difference, but if we go back in here, we've still got no sharpening on, but we can still see this sharpening halo. And this sharpening halo is down to pre-sharpening in the in the initial demosaic in algorithm. And I do wish Adobe would get rid of it. Uh, but no matter how hard you protest, Adobe just won't do a thing. So that is the fundamental principle problem that I've always had with Lightroom. Okay, it throws halos around anything like medium or high contrast boundaries or boundaries where you've got high frequency detail and low frequency detail uh, butted up against each other. You always get a, a sort of a pre-sharpening halo and it drives me crackers so if we go and have a look at the same image inside of rural therapy and uh, you can see that we haven't got a sharpening halo mm, it was weird that isn't it so what we're going to do is we are just going to go to uh, 
where are we? Uh, we'll go to my profiles, my base, and we'll neutralize everything. Okay, so we're now back to the initial uh, raw file, just brought into raw therapy with nothing done to it, apart from a little bit of capture sharpening and a little bit of color noise reduction, etc., uh, etc. Et That's all that's been done, nothing else. Right, so what I want to do is come into the color tab here, alrighty, and I'll minimize color toning because I want to come into color management. And you can see we're going to output this in Pro Photo, and we're working in Pro Photo, um, but it's on this camera standard um, processing profile. Let's take it out to a fit to screen view. And what we could do is we can go to custom and where it says none, we can click there. And obviously I've got all the profiles. So I'm in, don't forget I'm on a Mac. So I'm in library, application support, Adobe, camera raw, camera profiles, camera, Nikon D500, because this is the, uh, obviously the Nikon D500. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to apply the same DCP profile as we applied over in Lightroom, which is camera neutral. And we'll click open. And you can see the entire color and tonality of the image has changed. But what we need to do is apply the lookup table for the camera, uh, which sort of puts the color back where it's supposed to be and we'll put the neutral tone curve on the image and now you can see that's sort of made a heck of a difference hasn't it all righty now what i want to do is to actually go and look at the image at 400 percent which is what we're looking at with uh, in lightroom and uh, we'll take that up to 400 percent and we'll just use the navigator to scroll across. And uh, where's the sharpening halo? There isn't one. All right, so what I want to do next is to actually come back out to a fit to screen view. And I'm going to go up to, I'm gonna close the color management tab and I'm gonna to come to color toning and we'll go to color correction regions. Now I've done I think it's three videos on color correction regions. I'll put links to them uh, up here, uh, up wherever, or down in the description panel below. And you can go and watch those and see how versatile they are. Um, but really and truly, it, it's dead simple, but it's a little bit convoluted. Um, because don't forget, raw therapy is... Whew, it's a bit of a highly specialised competition sports car as opposed to a general family suv which lightroom is <laughs> um, lightroom is very intuitive it's very simple it's very easy but it has its faults raw therapy and i'll tell you now dark table are completely different kettles of fish and they are raw data processes as opposed to um, Lightroom, which is a bit of a jack of all trades. Alrighty, so the first thing I want to do is exactly what we did in uh, Lightroom, which is uh, improve the sky, make it a little bit lighter and increase the saturation of the sky. So the sky is blue, obviously. So what I want to do here is to go and select the blues because we're basing our selection or our masking on hue all right and so what i'm going to do is go show mask and uh, i need to turn the damn th module on uh color toning there we go so now any adjustments we make here will affect the entirety of the image because as you can see from the um oh god i forgot what you call this the curve um the white line is at the top all the way along the curve from the reds all the way through to the blues. So anything we do with these sliders here 
is going to affect the entirety of the image. Well, we don't want to be doing that because we want to do different things to the brickwork in the chimney breast than we do to the sky. All righty. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the reds out of this selection. All right. And straight away, you can see where the mask is yellow, uh, it will be affect the image. Where it is monochrome, it won't affect the image. So what I need to do is to, in effect, block out everything that isn't blue. All right. And as I drop these values down to the bottom, um, we'll drop that down to the bottom there as well. And then what we'll do is we'll include the blues into the greens. And then what we'll do is we will move the greens over there. Okay, and what we're doing is we're getting a general selection of the blue channel, the blue in the sky, plus where we've got blue light actually imposing or impinging on the shadow side of the chimney breast. But uh, what we'll do is just inch those blues over to the left there, and then we will inch this very dark blue stroke indigo over there. And you can see now we're removing it from the sky. So what we actually need to do is to move these colours over rather like this. And this is where it gets a little bit fiddly and uh, people get frustrated with rule therapy. Um, but, you know, I mean, it is what it is. So now let's just hide the visibility of the mask. And then what we can do is we can go to slope, which will lighten up the sky rather like that and saturation. And that will increase the saturation of the sky. Now what we want to do is make another region selection or another region mask. And we want to do the opposite thing. And we want to remove all the blues, so we don't want to see any sky selected. We'd better go and activate show mask. So you can see we've fundamentally removed all of the sky just with, with that. But what we're going to do is be a little bit more selective. And we're just going to click there and stretch out until we can see. You see, the colour represented in this vertical line doesn't always represent the colours in the image, which is why you need to be a little bit careful when you're actually doing this. And uh, we will just drop all of that down, rather like that. We'll drop a vertical in there, and then we'll drop a vertical in there, clicking like that. And so we've got a relatively good selection of the actual chimney breast and a few of the lighter areas in the side of the chimney that's in shadow right so what we're going to do now is just hide the visibility of the mask don't forget it's still there and what we're going to do is lighten it okay well no we're up in the saturation there a bit aren't we so we'll up the saturation now we'll lighten it Okay, and by increasing the slope, come on, got a bit of a sticky cursor there. So we'll lighten the side of the chimney up. Um, we did end up oversaturating that, that's a, bit, uh, that's a bit better. And then what we could try and do is with the offset and the power, we could attempt to drop the contrast or alter the contrast in the chimney breast itself. Let's take the offset down and uh, let's take it the other way i'm getting a bit mixed up there there we go so we bring in just a little bit more shadow detail and then if we change the setting of the power slider you can see we can <laughs> we can affect quite a big change there and it's a change we don't necessarily want to see all that much so what we'll do is we blow it up to a hundred percent and i might just drop that saturation a little bit more because it's looking a little bit on the full side and then turn up the slope just a smidgen 
like that okay but here's the thing we fully process this image now i might go and um, take a little bit of contrast out the image um over in the um and the exposure tab and and come all the way down to lab adjustments and just activate lab adjustments and just use the simple sliders and just drop a little bit of contrast out of the entire image that looks a little bit better but here's the thing we've done a lot of processing to this image over here in raw therapy um, but if we look and we scroll across whoops a daisy no sharpening halo no pre-sharpening halo um, I should say which just leads to especially if you're doing big prints it just leads to a cleaner image and that's just remind ourselves what it looked like inside of Lightroom uh, there you go and you can see here that don't forget we've got no sharpening on in Lightroom we've turned all the sharpening off if we go and put it back on um, look at it, we've got increased noise in the sky, which yes, we could get rid of. But look at this blooming halo here. Yeah, whereas over in Raw Therapy, we've got all our capture sharpening, which was automatically calculated by Raw Therapy, already turned off. Okay, so there you go. That is the, the fundamental reason why... I started to use raw therapy on shots where it mattered all right I'm not saying I use raw therapy for everything because if you're a subscriber to this channel you know damn well that's not true I use Lightroom wherever I can get away with it and where I don't think I can get away with it I use raw therapy all righty and uh, yes as I did say we are going to start using and demoing if you want me to a dark table um, because um, i downloaded the latest version of dark table and uh, guess what it's never worked on my machine before and uh, so yeah uh, but it does now and uh, again if i go into this at 400 percent and uh, i scroll across and come to that self same chimney pot edge look no sharpening halo so there you go um that's um, my little thing on why i'm not always keen on lightroom because it does this and uh, why i really do like raw therapy because it doesn't do that and uh, also uh dark table doesn't do it either so uh, anyway but the thing is i can't work out how to use camera profiles inside dark table i don't even know if you can so fundamentally the most versatile one is always going to be raw therapy and um, if i come back to uh, color no i won't i'll just go back to uh, exposure come back down to lab and I might just take a little bit of chromaticity out of it. That's like taking a bit of saturation out of it. Alrighty. Okay, guys and gals, that's just about it. Um, use the links below um, if you're on raw therapy um, and you haven't got access to the Lightroom camera raw profiles, which definitely you won't have if you're on Linux. So, like I say, go and download the files and uh, use them on your linux raw therapy installation yes all right guys and gals hope you enjoyed that hope you found it useful uh, if you enjoyed it give, give it a thumbs up leave a nice comment below uh, if you feel that way inclined uh, make sure you hit the subscribe button and the little ringity tingity bell to get a uh, notification and next time i put a video up and until the next time stay safe stay well keep taking the pictures and i'll speak to you very soon Two root.